We have this story from the Daily Mail, addicted to being sad. Yep. Teenage girls with invisible illnesses, known as spoonies, post TikToks of themselves crying or in hospital to generate thousands of likes as experts raise concerns over internet-induced wave of mass anxiety. This is real. It's this true real. that young women are getting depressed because of Instagram and TikTok. And as, as far as it goes with AOC, we were just talking about how she said she might not be alive in September, which to me is indication an indication of depression or severe, I don't know, what, what would you call it, like paranoia. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's possible that you know, she's in the limelight in this position. If she starts putting out posts like any other individual susceptible to depression from these platforms and she's not getting the likes or the attention, she might get depressed. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing this now with teenage girls across the board. Well, and she is one of the most followed, like has the biggest social media presence of any member of Congress. I mean, she has really cultivated her brand as being someone who is in touch with her followers. She does upgrades, updates through her Instagram Live and through Twitter and things like that. Like as well as shares her skincare routine and she sells fun merch. Like yep. she is as much an influencer as she is a politician and public figure in so many ways. She's more an influencer. Yep. Right, yeah. exactly. And so in some ways, you know, I could see if she's won re-election and she's had this moment where she was sort of this fun golden girl for the left. Uh, and if any of those numbers drop, like if she's getting 80,000 likes on a photo instead of the 110,000, she's going to feel that burn so intensely the same way that, you know, teenage girls are susceptible to it, too. Yeah. But like it is You'll, not just her identity. It's also her career. You see this throughout the history of YouTube. One day, a popular YouTuber will make a video saying, like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And then all you got to do is look at the views for their past videos and you see them going down. And then yep. all of a sudden they snap. Yep. So people, it's, it's really amazing to me. I remember getting a message from someone. It happens all the time. And they'll be like, are your views down? And then I'll be like, yes. And they'll be like, dude, something's going on. I'm like, it's called summer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> summer happened. People went outside. Calm down. Yep. Like, you see, I see these trends all the time. And there are people who, you know. There you should was, promote global warming so they stay inside. Well, I, I remember, yeah. uh, you know, like two years ago, it rained for a week straight on the East Coast across the board. Mm -hmm. And then one day I got messages from people being like, dude, my views are cut in half. I'm panicking. Like, what's going on? I'm like, bro, the rain stopped. Everybody went outside for the first time in a week. Calm down, man. Mm -hmm. But this is what happens to these young girls on, on social media. They'll post a picture of themselves, get 100 likes and go, ooh, 100. The next day they get 80. <gasps> They get depressed, they panic. Why aren't they getting likes? They delete the photo and repost yep. one. Can I do better? Can I do better? Not yep. realizing, bro, it's like two in the morning, people are asleep, calm down. I knew <laughs> girls who would, when they traveled out of the country, they would time their Instagram posts to go up. They'd like set alarm for like 3 a.m. So it was the correct time to post in America to get the maximum likes. And like. I didn't even grow up with TikTok. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> right. And I think social media has really morphed, too, where not only are we seeking validation through the likes, but your depression and anxiety is affirmed through social media. Mm -hmm. Like, social media used to be a highlight reel for people's lives. You follow these influencers, but you know it's not real. Like, yeah. they're in Hawaii, but they're probably arguing with their boyfriends behind the scenes, whatever the case may be. Now, it's a trend to cry on social media. It's a trend to show your panic attacks, and that gets you millions of likes. Or having, like, anxiety coping. Like, here are my anxiety copes, or here's my OCD coping. Or who right. are these things that I think I'm doing that are actually very yeah, strange behaviors views. or yes. misspelling words? So, <laughs> do it too, yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> it's, a, it, it's true that if you misspell a word in your title, you'll get mm -hmm. more engagement as people want to correct you. Wow. So what happened is a bunch of YouTubers started intentionally misspelling words like simple typos. Mm -hmm. And then little kids who are watching it started misspelling the words that way, thinking it was spelled correctly. Mm. Yeah. Your social media is is melting the brains of humanity. I gotta yes. Tell you. And uh, particularly young girls. I did an episode one time because I was scrolling on on TikTok. I do have the app, regrettably. Oof. But I was scrolling. It's part of it. your job. Yeah. It is part of my job. <laughs> but I kept getting videos of young girls who have Tourette's like ticks, And I kept getting them. And it's multiple girls, multiple girls. And I was getting recommended these videos and upon watching them found that several of them had the exact same tick so i started looking into this and doctors talking about it and they actually had doctors saying these girls are being so heavily influenced by a mix of anxiety and tiktok they are they are developing functional neurological disorders that are real that are real they're not just puppeting Yo. and parroting they're actually developing these anxiety induced tics. i'm a huge fan of video games but man we are tweaking our brains with modern technology yes no, but think it's of like, like a big experiment dude the mm -hmm. emotional development that teenagers are going through like part of being a teenager is looking at your peers around you and figuring out what the social norms are so if you're only being fed people who are behaving in you know maybe they really do have Tourette's and they have you know an issue and they're trying to talk about it or bring awareness but if you're constantly being served like I have anxiety I have depression I have Tourette's like you are then trained to be like maybe I do too yep. and you start seeing it anywhere because that's part of the emotional growth that teenagers are going through like yeah yep. we should keep them away from this stuff it's it's not like we shouldn't talk about mental health or anything like that but like 
we don't need to shove it down their throats so constantly that they become paranoid they themselves Absolutely. have these you know, issues. You know, one of the things is that I've noticed is it's not so important how many followers you have, it's the quality of the followers. Are they really, mm-hmm. why are they following you? Is it because they're really listening to what you're saying or is it because they want to laugh when you fall down? Yep. I don't want those people following me. And the, uh, the problem with social media is just the number shows on your page, so they think more is better. But then you get the subscri- direct subscribers. This is where you start to realize the quality of the follower uh, or the watcher or the viewer or whatever is much better because you might have 10,000 people paying you 10 bucks a month that he might have 10 million people watching paying him nothing. Mm-hmm. He's way worse off. You're way better off with less followers, more quality. And um, hopefully young women, we can teach them that maybe through direct they subscri- don't realize. subscriptions. Well, and they see the internet as the beyond end all. There's, I don't remember what study came out, but most young people, like one in four, want to yep. be social media influencers. Yep. This is a whole new area of the world that they are completely devoted to, right? And they will never have a break from it if that's the career they choose to pursue. Yeah, it's an augmentation to your career, social media. No one is just going to land on being a social media influencer and that's it. Because if your life is boring, no one's going to watch your social media. You've yep. got to do something cool with your life. And then the social media will be there to show everyone or what you're you doing. you have to sell all of your personal information. You have to, as a young teen mom, start talking about your mm-hmm. past relationships. Or, you know, as you get married, you have to give all the details of everything that's going on. You have to sell who you are yep. in order to please people, which is a really morally corrupt way of living. Yep. Yeah. I remember when I was younger and, the, you know, like MySpace first came out and stuff like that. We were on, I think it was like Live Journal was first. Yeah, I mean, Zanga. I, yeah, I, I was on CompuServe. You know, because my family had computers. Geo then you got AOL. Cities. Yeah. Then uh, with AOL, yeah, you had GeoCities and other sites that you could you could make your own site. Then eventually you got like Live Journal. Then you got Friendster. You guys remember Friendster? Hell yeah. And then MySpace. <laughs> yeah. And I remember uh, Facebook came out, and it was like all the cool kids started migrating to Facebook. And I would see these posts from people that just looked so awesome and fun, and I was like, how come they're doing all this really so awesome neat. stuff and I'm not? And then you know, it wasn't until later I realized like, oh, they weren't. Mm-hmm. They right. were faking cool things so they could look cool and like that was their, it was marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we end up we end up seeing this highlight reel of their life of all the coolest things they've done, but they staged a lot of it. They try to make it look as cool as possible. They try to make their lives look like movies so that you're jealous of them. Yep. My favorite is I know girls who have, um, when they go through a breakup, right? They start posting on their Instagram mm-hmm. and all their story all the time because they can't be the one that's at home and like sad. Yeah. They have to be busy and cool and having a great time. And their mind is somewhere else. Like These people don't realize no. they're robbing themselves of their own actual individual lives yeah. for the sake of other people who are viewing from their bedrooms. Yes, all they're giving away is their own time, which ends up being their lives. And I you do want to say before we move on from the a- all this AI, OC talk she's talking about holding two completely different views in mm-hmm. her mind at the same time i think she's about to get red pilled change my mind that's what it hope feels right. like hope i'm right i kind of went through something similar where i, I well i already t- mentioned this I earlier just, yeah sorry keep going. oh I, I truly believed in the possibility of of, ev- of, the, of the human race but at the same time seeing this insurmountable you know mountain of impossibility that i was up against and like mm-hmm. how the hell can i overcome a global monetary system well, but what if also a lot of the things that she's been preaching are not working and she's having to reconcile the fact that like there are policies that she is vocally back that she doesn't actually sh- she's not sure she point. supports she isn't just a person she is a brand and identity that right. a lot of lefts want to cultivate in their own daughters like she can't we talk about this with jazz jennings sometimes like <sighs> there's nowhere to go from there like this person can only continue down this path and that's scary yeah. aoc can't come out and be like well that one bipartisan bill seems kind of right. good you know she can't she has she can to never, continue down yeah. this path to get point. voted back in right and like if she she's gonna get married right but if she gets pregnant she's like well actually i'm gonna leave politics because i want to be a mom that's anti-feminist like oh you know i have some questions about the way lockdown went you know maybe that's not so good she's anti-covid you know she, there is no escape for her mm-hmm. and in some ways i have sympathy Cult. for that yeah it's true I you can't say i was wrong the most you feminist can. thing you can do yeah. alex is whatever you want mm-hmm. take control of your life baby such a I liberating think, like, thing at, to at have this a favorite feminist most, at the table. Yeah. The yeah, most have a baby. Thing. That's why I say Yeah, that. yeah. Have a family and do whatever and you want. Like, you can always do politics later. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Well, I mean, no, if, if she's doing what she's wanting to do wanted, anymore, leave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, but I think like right now, the whole trend is not to have a family. And it's mm-hmm. like you have to actually resist the current to have a family, which mm-hmm. is the funniest thing. You yeah. know, it's like it's been a meme forever to have it all. So the women who are like, you know, what? I decided I don't want to have a job and a career. I want to raise children. It's like. It's against the grain. But it is massively feminist to do that, to take control of your life if you want a baby. But that's why I think they intercede. I don't know, I mean, how many people you know who are feeling the pressure to 
decide in your early 20s that you actually don't want kids and make a permanent decision right. to go past that. Like yep. they are trying to head this off the south because a lot of times you actually hear it from women who are in their late 20s or in their early 30s who are like, I thought the career was the most important thing, but I've reached this age and I actually would prefer to focus on my family. Mm -hmm. And if you can prevent people from ever having that door, when they hit 30, they have to continue to stand by that they made the right choice to have, get a hysterectomy when they were 21. Wicked cycle, wicked Yikes. cycle. And then if you decide at 30 that you want a family, but you don't have the man yet and you don't have the, You're you know. Some your song also a bit. Yep. i tweeted this abortions increase the likelihood of miscarriage yep. that's true so entirely talk correct. About I, that. yeah i mean it's 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 a very basic thing i you know I, was, I saw the story from jennifer lawrence and she was like roe v wade and things like that and then i was like look if you support this stuff like women need to be told this that if you get abortions so like i, I look use condoms or whatever try not to get pregnant but if you get an abortion you are increasingly likely that when you're older, you're not gonna be able to have kids. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's there's damage that's caused by it. It's mm -hmm. the same thing with uh, taking birth control for years. Like those have long-term effects on the bodies, but because yeah. it's seen as this revolutionary tool that helped many women join the workforce and gain control of their body, like we're not supposed to criticize it. And I actually think that sets us behind. I've known a lot of women who have struggled with, you know, anxiety, depression, different things like that, and really had to push their doctors to be honest about the consequences of taking hormonal birth control. And that's scary. It's like insane. you can't even get accurate information because it goes against an ideology that we are supposed to be 100% behind. Yeah, we've just jumped into a culture that says this is accepted. Here's the thing you need to do. Now do it. And then 20 years later, when we have the ramifications of it, we're going to be like, and I, I wish women would hear that like you are they are willing to sacrifice you and your personal yep. choice and freedom and health to maintain this illusion that the ideology, the ideology they pushed is worth having around. Yes. Dude, if you are willing to give up your power to medical tyrannists, they will take it. Mm -hmm. But it's empowering, Ian. If you take the birth control pill, it's empowering. Mm -hmm. I This is terrifying what you just said, Amala, because I think that this is exactly what's happening with the kids now. So you know mm -hmm. how like however many years ago it was birth control was an un, you know unknown, but they still encouraged people to take it. It was so easy for me to get on birth control. I had to, I like half made up an excuse. Mm -hmm. Cause like I'm 19, now it's time. I gotta figure this out. Right. Be smart or whatever. And it was easy. It was the easiest thing in the world. And I'm terrified they're going to do the same thing with human hormones. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to Timcast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to Timcast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.